Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and uh, this is another real flow for Cinema 4D tutorial. And um, we're going to be looking at the uh, collider tag. So let's just jump straight in. Uh, as always, I'm going to go to the real flow menu, go to emitter. I'm going to create a circle emitter for this, I think. And I'm going to go to my scene and tell it that we're going to be using my 970 GPU. It's a shame that they don't use it in SLI, but ho oh hum. Uh, I'm also going to be going to the fluid display and I'm going to make our particles bigger for you guys, not smaller. There we go, it's a four, that should do it. That'll give us something like this, cool. Let's drag our emitter up and out the way a little bit. And uh, I'm going to need some more things in here to make our fluid look a bit more natural. So I'm going to choose the gravity demon. So our fluid flows a little bit more naturally. I'm also going to go to the emitter and I'm going to increase the horizontal random to maybe 0.3 just so it's a little bit more, a little bit more natural. Um, actually, vertical random. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, let's increase this to 0.3, that'll be fine. Okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> it's important to note that this, uh, if, if you're just coming to this video, um, and you've not dealt with uh, real flow for cinema d 4d before uh, I have done other tutorials on this so uh, the first one I did was called um, real flow for cinema 4d the basic and the and emitters so if you've not watched that yet uh, I suggest you go back and uh, you can watch that and then I go through some of the demons and their settings as well so it's well worth doing that uh, obviously if you've already gone through through those uh, you're at this point with me now so we're uh, <laughs> The collision tag. Basically what it does is you can apply the collision tag to geometry and it will then allow real flow particles to see that geometry and collide with it and interact with it. So we're going to need some geometry. So let me just set some up. I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to um, move it up by 100 centimeters so it's actually sat on the floor. I'm also going to turn on lines by pressing NB. Oh, NB. There we go. So I can see my lines now. And um, let's make this an editable object. Uh, it's important to note at this point that um, your cube doesn't have to be an editable object for the real flow collider to work. In fact, let's just put it on now. I'm going to right click on my cube, go down to simulation, um, real flow tags, and there we go. We've got our collider. As you can see, we've got the basic properties, wet map, and display. I'm not going to be dealing with the wet map tab because I think that probably deserves a uh, tutorial all of, it, all of its own. Uh, so we're primarily going to be um, dealing with the property tab and the display tab. But for now, let's just leave everything as it is and press play and see what happens. There we go. We've got particles colliding with our box. Ace. Um, the other thing I was going to do is uh, quickly save my scene, actually, because um, real flow can be temperamental, so I don't want to leave... Uh, you know, lose my information. Um, I'm also going to create a go up to the real flow menu demons uh, and the kill volume. So I'm going to go to the kill volume, go to the object, and uh, increase this to a thousand will do probably. There we go. So our box is a thousand by a thousand now. And I'm just going to move this up so we're somewhere like that. There we go. So anything outside of this volume will be killed now, as you can see here. And it keeps our simulations nice and zippy. Right, let's model our geometry then, so it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, and also, I think if we go to our scene and display, yeah, uh, this real flow icon on the floor there, it can be quite annoying sometimes, so you can check off its, this uh, display icon and it just gets rid of it. So there we have it. So let's play this. Yeah, we've got everything working, great. So let's make our geometry more interesting. I'm gonna, I've made it editable already, so let's select our cube. I'm gonna select uh, poly mode. And um, what do I wanna do here? Um, actually, let's go into point mode first. Um, my cube is selected, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I haven't made it editable yet. But yeah, I'm gonna make it editable. I am going to Grab these two points here and drag them up, just so we've got something like this. 
Um, maybe that's not the way to go. Mm. Who knows? Let's just make something interesting. I'm going to grab all the points actually and just make this thing a little bit wider by scaling them out. And uh, I'm also going to, let's see, grab the back polygon here and just control drag this out. So we've got something like this. And then I'm going to control drag this one up just so we've got a little bit extra stuff going on there. And uh, then I'm going to go to my points and grab these. And I'm going to pull that back like this. And um, what else can I do? Uh, let's go to our knife tool. Let's go to our knife tool. Where is it? I want my knife. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, I forgot in R8. I'm so used to using R. 17. Uh, R18 um, has split the knife tool up into line cut, plane cut, loop, path cut. So let's go to plane cut because that's what I want. And um, cut all plane mode free. Um, world. Okay, so it's cutting this way for the time being, and we don't want that. We want YZ, I think. No, nope. it's going to be XZ. There we go. So I'm just going to make a cut here. There we go. Christ, we got there in the end, didn't we? Um, I'm going to grab this bottom section and drag this out. And I'm um, just going to pull it out like that. So we've got some kind of weird weird thing here. Um, in fact, I'm going to make my object even wider. Let's do that. Let's drag this out even more. And then I'm going to grab this polygon here. And I'm going to right click and extrude inner. So I'm going to extrude inner here. And then I'm going to extrude down. We don't want to go through the bottom of this. We actually want it to be a solid object. There we go. So now we've got this kind of tray at the bottom. And uh, I think I'll do the same for this as well. So let's, uh, let's extrude inner there. And it just gives us something a little bit more interesting to... Uh, play with. There we go, let's extrude that in. And uh, I think I'll do the same for the top section here. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. Um, okay, let's do a doo -doo 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 loop path cut. Okay, so I've done that and we can add like this. There we go. I think that'll do us. And then what I'm going to do is select this one, this, uh, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm just going to move them all out so we've got some ridges. Maybe up a little bit. And it should just make things a bit more interesting for our collisions. Okay, so now I can zoom out. And uh, yeah, I think that should do us. I'm actually going to hide the K volume. Because I think that it will still get killed even though you can't see it, it's fine. It's just to get those lines out of the way. So now we can position our emitter. So we've got we've got some geometry now. So let's turn this so it's actually facing our geometry. So we're kind of making some like dodgy looking waterfall really. Um, so let's play. Let's see what happens when I hit play. Okay, so we're getting a result now. Um, unfortunately, it's missing our tray because of this little lip at the bottom there. Um, so maybe, maybe what I could do is grab this indent here, just so it's not so. Maybe actually, I could stitch. So if I go to stitch and sew, grab this and whack it up there and do the same for this one. Oh. Just grab that and put that up there. We might have something a little bit more forgiving. Right, it's definitely going into the tray now, but we can see that we're getting some collision issues. Um, 
and they are being killed killed off. Now we can go through the reasons for this now. Okay, I'm going to move the emitter slightly up because we can get a little bit more going on here. And I'm also going to save our scene again. Now this is actually really good because it's uh, demonstrating some of the problems you can get with collisions in, in real flow. So this is good. So let's, uh, let's just pause this. I'm going to save the scene. I'm just going to take a drink. Okay, so let's go to the collision tab. Now, in our properties, we've got a few sections here. We've got the actual collision, uh, collision section, we've got the interaction section, and then we've got this volume section. Um, like I said, we're not going to deal with the wet map, but if we go to display and show collision geometry and play, you can see that this is what our geometry actually looks like. Now, I suppose we should go through some of the properties on the property tab, some of the settings here. Enable collision is self-explanatory. If that's off, then it's like there isn't a collision tab on there. It's kind of like the uh, rigid body tag. You can say whether dynamics are on or off. So with it on, obviously we've got collisions on. And if I hide the cube, can we see that? Yeah. So we can actually see the collision geometry here if we hide the cube. And you can see this sort of like a low res version of our um, actual mesh. If I turn that back on and there's things we can do to combat this. Okay. So this collision distance uh, is the next thing we're going to look at. Uh, this parameter describes the distance between the particles and an object surface. So um, let me just turn this collision geometry off for the time being. By default, it is set to one centimeter and it seems to be doing pretty good. If I put this up to a hundred centimeters, you can see that it actually hits the geometry way before it gets there. So it's almost like a, I suppose you could do a force field effect or something like that, but it just expands the collision geometry. If I put that back on now, will it? No, it won't. It's just an offset. Um, yeah, it basically describes the distance between the particles and an object surface. So we can put that back to what it, what it was because it seems to be doing at least kind of a job for us. Uh, this collision geometry detail, I'm going to go back to display and turn on our show collision geometry. And this um, collision geometry detail, it has five levels of quality. The higher the level, the, you know, the higher the quality, but the longer the simulation will take because it's based on cells. Um, the fluid object collision will also be more accurate. Uh, changing the level influences and updates the cell size value found in the volume section. So that's down here. So if you look at this cell size at the moment, it says 25 and we're on medium. So if I put this to medium high, you can see that the cell size is now 12. And if I go to high, you can see it's now six. And you can see that the this is a lot more accurate. Now it matches our geometry a lot more closer. But I'm gonna put this back to medium for the time being. Uh, the next setting is continuous collision detection. And at the moment, auto is checked on. And this option prevents particles from going through thin objects such as glasses and planes, that kind of thing. So when an object's in shell mode, see the volume mode below. So you can choose, so if I check this off, you can see these different things that you get to choose. Um, and this is to do with this, okay? so. So you're in shell mode down here. Uh, continuous collision detection is active by default. So you could just leave that on auto and it would do it. But say if the object's volume mode or uh, is uh, solid inside or solid outside and um, you want to use col uh, continuous collision detection, you would have to deactivate this auto mode there and check this on to use that with solid inside or solid outside. And there may be reasons that you'd want to do that. Um, if you've got particles spilling through your object in a really weird way or something like that. Okay, the interaction section, I'm gonna leave for a moment and I'm gonna go down to the volume section. So let's have a look at the good old volume section. Cell size is, um, is basically dealing with the resolution of the um, collision shape. Uh, so if we turn this off, we can see it's at 25 now. So let's put turn this down to something like 10. And you can see the collision shape updates and it, um, it's a lot closer to what we have. In fact, I think 10 would do nicely for what we've got here. Um, but you could go even more 
extreme and go down to say five and you can see uh, the cell size is a lot is a, uh, is a lot smaller but our, the detail of our collision mesh our collision shape for the particles is a lot more accurate so I might leave it at five actually and just pray to God it doesn't crash uh, <laughs> so let's go to file and save and make sure that if it does crash we're at a decent point I'm going to check turn off our collision geometry for the moment and then just see how that looks I'd say that's pretty good I'd say that's pretty natural something else that I want to note as well while we're at it uh, let's go to the fluid uh, yeah we did put up the fluid size uh, sorry the particle size in terms of how it's viewed on screen um, just making sure I actually did that for you guys so you'll notice that with this emitter um, our particles look pretty together up here and as they spill down our sort of cascade down our object they um, kind of spread out and um, they kind of thin out really and you know when we come to meshing that probably wouldn't look too good now for the purpose of just you know sort of letting you guys know this is in there and all the rest of it if we go to fluid and then go to simulation uh, sorry if, if we go to fluid and then go to the fluid tab we've got this resolution here um, now this is basically a description of density so in fact what does the help tell us about this it says with this setting you can change the amount of particles when resolution is set to one a volume of 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters is filled with a thousand particles the parameter accepts any positive value so it just makes the resolution of the thing better so we're on two at the moment what if i put this to 10 you can see that we've got more particles now and they're denser they're closer together which is probably something you'd want if your particles are spreading out a little bit too much um, so i'm going to leave that on 10 and save again um, that shouldn't be mixed up that value shouldn't be mixed up with i'm going to put it back down to two and it shouldn't be mixed up with the emitter speed because if i say oh well if i put this emitter speed up to 400 it's going to crap out more particles well it is within a given time limit but you can see they're coming out much faster the velocity is being changed well what if you want to keep the same velocity that you've got but you just want a denser fluid this is how you do it uh, via this um, setting here so it's on 10 we're happy and we've got it cascading down our our thing now okay so let's go back to the collision tag um, and go back to properties so we've set our cell size now to five and we're getting a lot more of a um, accurate uh, collision shape so what's the next one on the list we've got this surface offset down here as well um, and that basically this parameter creates a solid extension around the object and prevents the fluid from penetrating its surface um, as you can see it's set to zero so it's butt up against our actual geometry at the moment um, so if we actually turn on our collision geometry like this we can actually visualize this off offset so if I turn off auto it's set to zero at the moment but if I set this off to 10 and then press play there we go you can see that we've got an offset now of our collision if I set this up to something mental like 50 and then uh, rewound and there we go you can see that um, we've got this offset now so if I turn this off you can see that it's kind of doing a little bit what the um, oh shit yeah what this collision distance setting was doing a little bit but it's actually instead of you know changing the collision distance it's actually changing the offset of the surface and therefore the shape because you can see that it's a lot more sort of like bubble like and blobular um, so if we go back to this uh, and the surface offset was zero was it so let's go back play you can still see that we've got some slight you know we can still see the geometry there a little bit so what if I change the surface off to set to 0.5 centimeters and is that okay it improved it a little bit so maybe one centimeter so you can see how we can tweak this to make sure that this is matching our geometry but I doubt 
in most cases this would matter too much unless you were trying to be super super accurate because once you've messed your particles these these things are not going to be very noticeable but i've put the offset to two and that seems to have sort of like fixed our problem really um so let's have a play now that seems to be pretty good yep that's pretty good that's not bad at all okay so the next setting is domain offset so i'm i might leave actually i'll get i was gonna say i might leave it for a minute but uh no i'll i'll, I'll go through this so um so in order to improve fluid object interaction you can increase this parameter the effect is that the fluid will see the object earlier this can be interesting for fast moving flu uh fast moving fluids by default domain offset is calculated automatically based on the collision geometry detail level for manual contro uh, control check auto so <clears throat> so the fluid object interaction you can increase the uh, so the effect is that the fluid will see the object earlier okay well if we take this off then and say okay well it's at 100 centimeters does it see the object earlier does it collide with it earlier well, it doesn't appear so. It doesn't appear like it's uh, colliding with the object earlier at all. And that's because um, it doesn't actually mean the collision itself. What it means is, as far as I can tell, is this in interaction stuff. So at 100 centimetres, at a metre away, it will actually take into consideration friction, bounce, sticky roughness, and all this other stuff here. Um, so it will still collide when it's meant to collide, but all these interaction um, effects will be evident a lot quicker. So we'll look at that when we start changing these. So for now, I'm gonna change this back to auto and uh, press play, and you can see it's flicked back to zero there. Okay, so the volume mode. Um, it's gonna be a little bit hard to show this shape maybe. Okay, so we've got it on auto and it was set to solid inside. So basically what that's saying is, this geometry is solid geometry. For all intents and purposes, its insides are, you know, solid. It's a mass. So the only thing we're interested in colliding with, with is the outside surface, which is what it's doing, which is fine. Okay, so uh, in fact, let's turn this geometry off now. Okay, there we go. So we're getting a good result. In fact, let's put some more time on our clock as well, so we can, you know, see this thing fill up or whatever. There we go, you can see that filling up now. Okay, um, so that's what we want, isn't it? For this kind of shape, solid inside. Uh, what other options have we got? We've got solid outside. So what, what's that saying? Uh, solid outside creates a hollow object and fluids interact with the inner surface. So now we can see that this goes straight through and you're thinking, well, where are they going? Where's the particle that is going? Well, if I hide the object... Sorry, guys, I just had to cut it again because it crashed. It seems like um, the collision tab here doesn't like this uh, property of solid outside for some reason. But it's basically saying that if you've got a um, hollow object, you can um, fill it using this. In fact, I'll give it another go. Let's see what happens. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll create a new scene. New. I'll create a new sphere. We'll make it a hemisphere. We'll flip it the other way. We'll create a real flow scene. Um, we'll also make this object a lot bigger and also show lines as well. Um, and we'll just start crapping particles into it. That's fine. Okay, and we'll give this thing a collision tag. Okay, so it is actually colliding on the inside. Let's give it gravity as well. Um, do, 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 do. So it's actually handling that fine. Um, so let's go to the collision tab and take this. Oh, <laughs> it's automatically turned it to shell. So it was on solid inside. So let's see what happens when that that happens. Yes. And I've got the feeling, because if we actually turn our sphere into an editable object, and let's just play it again and see what happens. It's got a collider tab on, but it's saying, well, that's no good. And I've got a feeling, when you've got it set to solid inside, 
it's probably got to do with normal direction. So if I select my sphere and press this and select all the polys, you can see that the normal direction on, on the outside here is correct. It's facing out, but these normal di the normal direction on the inside of the sphere is uh, that's the back face of the normal. So what if we flipped these? That would that let's reverse the normals and go back to the beginning. No, nope, it still doesn't like it, which is strange. I thought it, that would have solved our issue. Um, so we can reverse that back to what it was. So maybe then, uh, if I go back to the beginning and say this is solid on the outside, we are getting some interaction, but it's getting confused. And it's because that this object is kind of like a plane. It's really, really thin. So when it was set to water, it automatically detected it needed this shell. So now you can see that it's filling up. So now you get a good idea of what this, uh, what's going on here. Okay, so I'm just going to, um, in fact, I'm going to close this scene because we only needed it temporarily. So now you've got a good idea of what, of what that does. So if you've got a solid object like this, you want it solid inside, which is when I was set to auto, it automatically detected that. Most of the time it does, to be honest. So you're better off leaving this checkbox on. Um, solid outside. Uh, is if you've got a hollow in the middle, so like cave structure or something like that. And shell is for stuff like, uh, well, the bowl that I just had, planes, glasses, you know, drinking glasses, that kind of thing. So let's put this back to auto. Okay, so we've dealt with all of that now. Now let's go to the interaction stuff. Now this is where you can really start crafting your fluid. Um, I'm just going to take a drink. Okay, so friction. A value of zero creates absolutely no friction and a perfectly even surface. So this is pretty low. I mean, look at that value. It might as well be zero. What happens when I make it zero? Not a lot of difference there. Okay, so this... And this isn't the friction of the fluid. I just want to make that clear. That This is just the friction of the... Of, of the um, you know, it doesn't affect the fluid in any way. It's just the surface of the um, collision object. Okay, so high values can even stop particles from moving. This p parameter accepts all positive values between 0 and 1. So it's almost like 100%, really. 0 being nothing and then 1 being 100%. Um, so let's crank this up. Let's say 0.1, because that's a bit of a higher value. Now you can see that um, our particles are sort of gathering on our surface a little bit more and they're being slowed down as well you can see there's a lot more blue going on there if i uh, just control z back to what it was you can see the velocity is a lot quicker but um when we've got point one the friction is actually taking some energy out of those particles and that's kind of good as well it's kind of um good for our little waterfall effect there so let's uh, let's crank this up a little let's go extreme let's go to one there we go i mean that is it's almost like paint or something you can see it's hitting the surface and stopping. But the, it's important to know, like I said earlier, this is only um, affecting the, uh, the collision object, not the fluid itself. So as you can see, the particles that are hitting the surface are stopping. The particles that are then being added on... Let's, let's add some more time on this timeline. It's a bit short, isn't it? And also save our scene, just in case. Um, yeah, so these particles that are actually hitting the object are stopping, but you'll see that the particles that are actually being, um, that are crashing into those particles on top are sliding right off. So it's just the particles that are in contact with the surface of our object. Now, I think that's a little bit extreme, so maybe 0.5. That's still a bit extreme, to be honest. Um, yeah, okay, so I think maybe 0.2 or something like that was okay. For the most part, mm, maybe that's too much. Point 0.1. Let's go for that. The nice thing is it's slowed down our particles. They're not jumping off the edge anymore. They're filling our little tub at the bottom, which is nice and it's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, I might even half that, actually, just a little bit. Nor no, 0 0.08 or something like that. It's still quite in extreme. So you can see this is quite, it can be quite sensitive, this, uh, there we go. It's not as bad, but, um, I don't know, let's crank it up to 0.8. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so we've got our friction. Bounce. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, 
A value of zero creates a perf perfect elasticity, while higher settings make the particles lose uh, appropriate amounts of their energy. The maximum value is one. So again, this is zero to one. Um, so let's turn this down to zero and see what happens. So it's like it's hitting a brick wall, basically. It's, you know, there's no give on the object's surface. There's no, there's no energy that has been um, changed its direction. You may want that for a really hard surface or something like that, granite or something. You know, it's a big, this is a big block of stone or something like that. Uh, here you can see 0 0.25. So you can see that the difference in velocity between 0 0.25 and zero. So we're getting a little bit of slowdown here, but with bounce, it's actually um, sort of putting the energy of the object, sort of forcing it in a different direction, if you like. Now, okay, let's crank this up then. Let's say 0 0.5. Is there a difference? Let's go extreme and say one. Yes. So, you know, particles that are hitting this are bouncing off and then they're hitting this and they're bouncing off further. So, you know, you can see that they're coming off, they're hitting the backside of this and, you know, bouncing into the air. Um, so that's the highest setting there. And if you go back to 0.25, it kind of eases off a little bit. I think that for this, we could go even lower. I'm going to say uh, 0.15. There we go. Sort of calms it down a little bit, maybe. But, um, yeah, you can see that when we go zero. You know, we're getting a bit more, bit of a uniform, bit more uniform down the bottom, really. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one uh, point one. That'll do, that'll do for us. <clears throat> okay, so that's that covered. Sticky. This is a good one. Um, it can be seen as a glue factor to make particles stick on the object's surface. You can use positive attraction and negative. So repul uh, repulsive setting. So let's have a look at this. Let's see if this actually does anything um so sticky is at zero at the, at the at the time at this time so let's put it to one oh, that didn't do a lot so let's crank it up to i don't know 30. now okay but it's kind of gathering okay okay so at zero we're getting this and then at say let's say 50 what are we getting okay yeah so it's it's kind of like him making the surface a little bit tacky if you like um i wonder if we can go higher than 50. yeah you can so okay well, then now you can see the effect okay you might have noticed another cut there i've had another <laughs> i've had another another little uh crash there but um yeah i'll uh i'll save again and I think it's because we cranked our sticky value up to a ridiculous amount. Let's put it up to 80 and see if it can handle it. So you can see what sticky does right there. Let's try a negative value, negative 80. And then go back to the beginning to reset the scene and then play, play again. So it's kind of like pushing away. It's going, uh. So it's the opposite of this sticky value. So let's um, reset this to default. And... Uh, there you go, the sticky value is zero now. Um, and you can see that uh, we've got a friction value on there and our bounce is back to normal as well. Good. Okay, good. Okay, so that explains the sticky value. Um, next, we've got roughness. Uh, again, the value ranges between zero and one and adds randomness to the object's polygon normals. So, you know, when we see this um, polygon here, it is just one flat, shape and it's normal is determined by you know its points and everything else but um that's what this roughness does it, it's almost like it puts sort of pitting on the surface of a polygon's normal um so it produces slightly different collision direction now the effect can be quite subtle so i mean if we play the simulation so we've got this and roughness is at uh, this really low value at the moment. So if I start cranking it up to something like this. Okay, so you can see that how it's affected it. It's um so maybe something not that extreme, but it basically makes the um surface a lot rougher. 
in terms of um okay so I've just turned it up there we go so that's not so bad it adds some um randomness to the object surface without it having to be modeled basically so that could be uh, quite helpful and then underneath that we've got interaction distance uh, with 10 for example particles with the distance of 10 units to Depends on the actual scene scale from the object surface will be affected by parameters like friction, bounce, etc. The value is uh, automatically based on collision distance for manual control, check, unchecked. So, so interaction distance, this is where all these things come into play. It's on auto at the minute and you see that it's got a value of 2 centimeters. And that's probably because I've offset the surface by 2 centimeters. So let's uh, turn this up and go back. And it's still two centimeters for our uh, for our other one here. So if I uncheck this, it means that all of these things will be affected at this distance that we can define here. So you can see that the particles have been affected a lot earlier. Um, but if I check this back to auto, you know, we're back to what we had. So that's what that that does. It, um, I know I said earlier that uh, this domain offset did that for this. Um, uh, I think there might be a relationship there. Um, so that's what this does. So now you can see how you can start crafting your collisions here and um, how you can visualize them as well. We're using this uh, show collision geometry. That's uh, extremely helpful because if you've got particles leaking through your geometry, you can see where these problems are actually occurring, which... Uh, makes it a lot easier to detect. Um, there's another set in here called show collision velocity, so I can go over that quickly. Uh, we don't, I'm just gonna save this scene as it is, so I don't ruin it, but I'm gonna go back to my fluid and turn the resolution back down to two, put less stress on our thing. Okay, so we don't really need to worry about the fluid per se for, um, this velocity so if I turn velocity on and uh, go back to the beginning and press play we've got this and if I zoom in you can see that we it's a load of sort of red dots around the outside of it and that actually just sort of shows the objects vector when animated so let's animate the object okay so we've got our cube let's go to object mode and we'll set some keyframes so Okay, it can be in the middle for the first keyframe, and then we'll go here, and it can, I don't know, uh, yeah, we'll give it one second. We'll actually make it move quite a distance in one second, so we can go here and press that, and we can go to two seconds and make it go over here and key it, and then we'll just go somewhere like this uh, and grab it go here and then we just grab the one it's starting position and copy that and drag it right to the end there we go so it returns to its uh, place of origin okay so now if we play it with this velocity thing on we can see that it kind of leaves this ghosting behind it so we can actually see it sort of ghost trails if you like and you can see how that's really struggling with that. <laughs> it's probably because of the cell size. In fact, it probably is. Let's test that theory by going to properties, cell size, auto. There we go. It's running a lot quicker now. But yeah, it kind of shows its velocity. Um, I'm not sure why that would be helpful. Uh, the option is available for animated objects and display is its velocity is red lines. The line's length is an indicator for the object's velocity. If the collision velocity vectors are not visible, reset the scene to frame zero or scrub the timeline. So I just suppose it gives you an idea of speed. And uh, there may be some way that you can utilize that information that I'm not aware of. But that's, uh, that's the long and short of it for the uh, collision tab, uh, tag even. Um, We've covered everything in its properties and this display. The wet map, I think that deserves its own tutorial because it can get complicated and uh, um, yeah, we'll cover that in another one. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 
Um, I hope there weren't too many cuts in it, but real flow at this stage can be quite temperamental. And uh, as always, check out the website, digitalmeat.uk. Uh, there you can vote on the next upcoming tutorial. And you can also uh, you know, check out all the other bits and bobs on, on the website as well. Um, follow me on social media. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Uh, I'll put links in the description for that. Also, if you'd like to help keep Digital Meat afloat, um, pun intended, uh, you can check out my Patreon page, and um, there will be a link for that on the outro of this video. So please consider that if you found this tutorial helpful or any other tutorial that I've done. It'll really mean a lot to me. Okay, guys, I'll see you for the next tutorial. Bye.